the haunting wilderness of Canada's North Woods stirs up images of howling wolves and voyageurs. It has been said that once a person has been to the boreal forest, you will never forget it. The boreal forest includes shimmering white barked birch trees along with pine, spruce, and fast-growing poplars. North of the boreal forest, the trees thin out until finally the land is bare and the tundra stretches like a sea, bleak and desolate. Several different groups of people all called this area home, including the Dene, Cree, Ojibwe, Innu, and Biothuk. Most indigenous people of the Subarctic were organized into bands or groups of people who spoke the same language dialect and were related by kinship and common traditions. The indigenous people of the Subarctic dwelt in one of the most difficult environments for survival. The hardships were tremendous. Long, cold winters made traveling and hunting difficult. The warmth of the summer brought the tormenting swarms of blood-sucking mosquitoes and black flies. The land, however, provided all that the indigenous people needed to survive. One of the most important animals were the herds of caribou that roamed the land. They followed familiar patterns of migration, crossing rivers and streams at the same point each year. It was the reliability of this annual migration that lent security to the existence of the people. The hunt during the fall migration was the most important of the year in order to provide food and skins for the long winter ahead. Food, clothing, tents, ropes, and tools all came from the caribou. Different groups relied on animals that were plentiful in the area where they lived and hunted. Moose, bear, bison, and deer, as well as smaller animals, such as fox, beaver, and rabbits, were hunted for food and fur. No part of the animal was wasted, and a ceremonial prayer of thanks was often said for the life of the animal. The northern lands are the summer breeding grounds of many birds, and the sounds of returning ducks and geese was a welcome sign of spring. The birds were lured into arrow range with decoys and bird calls. It also provided the opportunity for many different varieties of eggs to be gathered. The people also gathered blueberries, cranberries, Saskatoon berries, and currants. People caught fish with dip and gill nets, traps, spears, and hook and line. Berries that were dried were often mixed with fat and fish or were mixed with pounded dried meat and grease to make pemmican. The subarctic peoples typically lived in communities of 25 to 30 people. Each group moved frequently within a well-defined territory as the supply of animals changed from season to season and from year to year. The Tuchon, Denny of the Yukon Plateau and others west of the Rocky Mountains gathered along rivers during the summer to catch and dry salmon. The Chippewan and Denny living north of Lake Athabasca moved to the edge of the barren grounds to follow the caribou herds. Innu spent their summers near the Atlantic, Gulf of St. Lawrence or James Bay coasts and moved inland during the winter. The Danza hunted bison on the parkland adjacent to the Peace River and used controlled burning to maintain the animal's habitat. In the winter, houses were moved to areas that provided shelter from the bitter north wind. Toboggans and snowshoes were essential for winter travel and allowed the people to move through the deep snow to check their trap lines. The subarctic peoples had rich and unique cultures. Learn all about their clothing, ceremonies and spirituality, family structure and leadership, which weren't mentioned in this video, on the website firstpeoplesofcanada.com or follow the links below.